An Olympic medal is the ultimate prize for every athlete. There's no greater honor or achievement than standing on the podium while your national anthem plays. Plus you get to be on a Wheaties box and that's totally sweet. Are you ready to make sports and cereal history? This is Epic How To Win a Gold Medal. Epic How To. Before we begin, let's be clear, getting to compete in the Olympics, let alone win a medal, is not easy. It's actually really, really, really hard. Most Olympic athletes begin training at a young age. 2008 gold medalist Sean Johnson started gymnastic classes when she was just three years old. The training schedule of an Olympic athlete is long, grueling, and intense. Athletes often train six days a week for years on end with high-level coaches at private facilities away from their friends and family. And even then, only the best of the best stand a chance to qualify, let alone win the Olympics. No matter the sport, if you're not a great athlete with passion, dedication, and drive, you're not going to win an Olympic medal. Sorry. Winning an Olympic medal might be difficult, but it's not impossible, and it's easier to do in some sports than in others. But which sport is your best bet? How about shooting? In a recent ESPN article, it was ranked by pro athletes and staff writers as the least physically demanding of all the Olympic sports. It's also the sport in which the oldest Olympian, 72-year-old Oscar Swan, medaled. But to qualify for shooting takes years of practice, and you're competing against thousands of would-be hopefuls for just 20 spots. Hey, this is America. You shouldn't be surprised that a ton of people want to shoot guns. Second Amendment commentary. You could try curling. Curling is a sport where two teams slide heavy granite stones toward multiple scoring zones in order to rack up the highest score. It's basically shuffleboard on ice. But curling at a high level is actually extremely difficult and highly competitive. There's a lot of balance, precision, and dexterity involved that makes curling tough to quickly pick up and even tougher to master. Rowing is most definitely not an easy sport. It requires tons of strength and skill. But what about the guy who just sits there and tells all the other rowers what to do? That, my friends, is called a coxswain. Now get all those dirty jokes out. Now, I'll wait. Okay. The coxswain is responsible for steering the boat, motivating the rowers, and making all the tactical decisions during the race. While it's easy to write off the coxswain as nothing more than a glorified middle management position anyone can do, China even ran a reality TV show to find their coxswain for the 2008 Olympics, there are some unique qualifications that make it difficult to be one. Not only do you need a deep understanding of how the boat handles, you also need to be small. Male coxswains weigh 120 pounds and females around 110 pounds. Any heavier and you'd slow the boat down. That's the antithesis of what she wants to do. There's also not that many coxswains at the Olympics since they were eliminated from all but the eight person crews. Each country only has two coxswains at the games, one male and one female. The sport that you want is bobsled. Bobsled teams of two or four navigate a sled down a designated track. Each team is composed of a pilot who steers the sled, a brakeman who slows the sled down with a brake, and two pushers who push the sled down the track at the start. You want to be a pusher. As a bobsled pusher, you have arguably the greatest chance of getting to compete in the Olympics for two reasons, short training times and high demand. Most bobsled pushers only need to train for less than a year to become Olympic caliber. The skill ceiling is low enough that any good athlete can pick it up quickly. Lolo Jones, a former Olympic hurdler, made the transition to bobsled pusher and won gold at the 2014 Sochi Games after only a year of training. But Joe, that she was a, that's an Olympic athlete becoming an Olympic athlete. Shut up, it's an example. Every single member of the gold-winning 2010 U.S. four-man bobsledding team came from other sports. Lauren Williams was a former gold medalist in track and field, and she would go on to win a silver in bobsledding. She finished third in the U.S. push championships, which was the second time she ever tried pushing. Kurt Thomas-Evitz, one of the 2010 team's pushers, acknowledged in an interview that being a bobsled pusher is just pushing the sled as fast as you can. Stuart McMillan, coach at the U.S. Bobsled and Skeleton Federation, said, You can become a world-class push athlete literally within weeks not to undersell it. And there aren't a ton of bobsledders vying for spots on the Olympic team. In all of the United States, there are only around 300 active bobsledders at the two places in the country where you can actually train. And with 14 men's and six women's spots on the Olympic team, those are some comparatively good odds. So how do you unleash your inner cool runnings, 90s reference, and become a bobsled pusher, John Candy? It's easy. Simply go to the official Team USA bobsled website and send in a resume. After passing a series of combine tests like sprints, standing broad jumps, and power cleans, you're in the running to qualify for the Olympic team. But what does bobsled training look like? 
According to Chris Folkt, member of the 2014 US men's bobsledding team, it's a lot of legwork. <laughs> Literally, legwork. To push a 500 pound bobsled, you need to have strong legs. Jump squats, box jumps, and lunges are your bread and butter exercises. You'll also be lifting in the gym twice a week to build strength and power, but too big of an upper body and you'll end up slowing the sled down. So there's a balance of being powerful, but not having the gigantic shoulders and chest of 70s Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now what can you expect when you're actually in a bobsled? Lolo Jones says, it's like being put in a metal garbage can and thrown off of Mount Everest. Chris Phelps says, it's a lot like being in a car wreck, but at four to five Gs. That's right, four to five Gs. A typical bobsled can go as fast as 90 miles an hour. You did it! You pushed your bobsled down to Olympic victory. Congratulations on your Olympic medal. You had to endure grueling and dangerous runs in sub-zero temperatures, but that medal makes it worth it. Ready to win another one in four years? You better be, I'm counting on you. This has been Epic How To. Let us know what topic you guys think we should break down next in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe.